so, we're a little bit quicker. You could have gotten a helicopter in a picture from the military while I was up there. So this is like where during the war they yeah this is how they protected the the area yeah well and, and the military base right and also there used to be um oh that's right on, on, point. on Burnside Road yeah um just check what's in here I'll be back ration for the week. Meat was typically at around uh, 24 ounces per week. And so that's around four ounces a day. If you think about a typical steak in a restaurant now, it's around six to eight ounces, so it's almost double your daily ration there. Things like butter, you could uh, bring these stamps in and you could bring in the stamp, they would stamp it off, and then you could purchase your butter allotment for the week. This is a half cup. And so that's typically what was allowed per week per person. And so as a family, you could definitely bring together all of your different rations and uh, combine them into one thing if you're making it for a whole family. But at the same time, half a cup of butter per person isn't going to last a super long time, especially when you're trying to bake everything and you're trying to make you know, so much stuff, right? And so. Another thing that goes along with baking and making it hard to uh, ration out is sugar was also rationed. Sugar was rationed at about 200 grams per week. So that's about that much per person per week. <laughs> and so if you think about it now, uh, average Canadian eats around 100 grams a day of sugar. 
that's and one, so. one, one tub of Kool-Aid. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, <laughs> a Coke is like 33 grams yeah. of sugar. Mm -hmm. And so um, uh, that stuff today, it's all hidden and everything now. We don't think about it as much, you know, eating raw sugar and as much stuff. But back then, it's going to be going in so many things that you're making, right? That's how it runs out so fast. So you got to be really careful. And I don't know if you guys are coffee or tea drinkers. Coffee. Coffee? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Coffee's at around uh, 8 to 10 cups a week. And so, and that's not like mugs. That's like the actual, like a measuring cup of coffee. And so if you want more than a, a cup per day, you're going to be going with some pretty weak coffee. <laughs> I worked with a cook. She went through two pots of coffee a day by herself. Uh, yeah, no, that's uh, that doesn't go by our rationing no, standards no. here. <laughs> I think you might have to cut back a little bit. But um, as I mentioned, this stuff, so flour and milk and eggs, they weren't exactly rationed, but they were definitely hard to find because we were sending so much of it overseas. So we accounted for around 57% of Britain's flour and wheat, so well over half, and about 10 to 12% each of their eggs and milk. So that stuff was all being transported transported overseas, so it's going to be hard for uh, Canadians back home, especially in cities, to find those sorts of ingredients. And so, if you want to make things like, maybe someone has a uh, birthday coming up and you want to make a cake for them, or you have a social gathering and you need to make a cake, you're going to have to get pretty, pretty creative. And so, one of those ways, if you're making a cake for something coming up and you're like, oh, I don't have any milk, one thing that you can do is actually replace milk with tomato soup. And so you can make tomato soup cake. And so, it doesn't sound great to me. I actually just got a recipe from my mom for that from back in the 60s. Really? Yeah. yeah. And well, she said it's quite good. That's what I've heard. I've heard it's quite, quite good. And you'd be, um, like you add uh, things like nutmeg and cinnamon to it, kind of like a tomato spice cake. But similar to something like zucchini, it doesn't have that much of a, like a vegetable or fruit taste. It's very sweet and creamy, and so it makes a perfect milk replacement. And Many then people that have used yeah. applesauce in place of liquid for baking. That would be really smart, actually, because it's also got a good flavor for it. Ah, see, all these things are related. This is a cook, so education all around. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have uh, things like our fruit cocktail. So not only a delicious snack inside, I absolutely love fruit cocktail, but. It's also a very, very sweet syrup, right? And so that syrup can be used to replace sugar in a lot of recipes as a sweetener. And so if you're being really careful about things, you do not have to tap into your rations as much as you might think. And if you've got a birthday coming up for someone and you're like, oh, I really want to make a chocolate cake for them, a tomato soup cake, it just isn't going to cut it this time for me. And you don't have any of items that you really need for like a cake. You don't have any milk, you don't have eggs, you don't have butter. You can actually still make a cake. And the way you do that is with white vinegar as a key ingredient. So white vinegar plus baking soda makes that like frothy like volcano, right? You know, and then you put that with your flour and then with some cocoa powder and maybe sugar, uh, sugar or if you're being really smart, some of this stuff, some of the syrup in this, and then with some water all together, you have a wonderful fluffy chocolate cake that you can use, and it's, it's actually really good. I have had that one. That one is quite delicious, but and also just naturally vegan the way it's made. And then things like vegetables, people were really highly encouraged to grow their own stuff because all of that was outside of government. Right, and it was actually highly encouraged by the government. They called it uh, victory gardens, and so if people could grow their own gardens and provide their own fruits and vegetables for themselves, the government was super happy because that meant that they didn't have to uh, expend extra resources getting people these food. Yeah, it's much cheaper, <laughs> and healthy. so it's perfect. Yeah, and healthy, and like you get everything you need. And then if we're living around somewhere like here, you have such wonderful access to. who go out and they go fishing. And so you could go grab salmon, you could go grab all sorts of fish, shellfish. but also shellfish. Yeah, like you go down to the beach, you grab some clams, grab some crabs, and then, yeah, you just 
uh, supplement your diet with whatever you can find around you, and that's all good to go. So, Nuts yeah. and berries. Yeah, absolutely. Anything around here. There used to be a farm actually on site itself. In the interwar years, there were some families that lived here, and uh, they had apple trees. You might notice some apple trees around, actually, and they would make uh, apple ice cream. So, yeah. The, the only thing that uh, caught my attention is I am from the Philippines oh, and yeah. we use the word ration oh, yeah. and, I, and I thought it is our language and it's also <laughs> uses. Yes. <laughs> um, and the same, the same, yeah. the same meaning yeah. also. A lot of their language is based on Spanish with a lot of French and they're like pants or pantalon. Yeah. yeah. Coffee yeah. is cafe. Yeah. yeah. She bought me a DVD to try and learn the language, and as soon as it started down, well, this is high school friends. <laughs> <laughs> it's very difficult to pick up. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, there's, it's, uh, lots of people have had to go through rations. Pretty much well, everyone in the world. In some places, until very recently, had them as well. And then during certain events, people have to go back on them. Right. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, we had one family who came up during the, uh, the Civil War. During elementary, we used to receive um, corn flour oh, yeah. and milk, and I don't know where it came from, but it was served to us in the school, like um, lunch break. I mean, I mean, like we have a snack time, so that's yeah. been. Yeah, Like a break. 
three quick looks. Mm -hmm. Just floating and then 